Hello and welcome to Pro Tips for Positrack Pro, our online video training series. In this video, we will cover the basics of point of sale, like creating an invoice, handling cores and returns, and doing manual sales. So once you're in point of sale, across the top, you have options like catalog, interchange, buyer's guide, and so on. Below that, on the left side, you have your invoice. On the right side, customer information, customer lookup. Across the bottom, on the left side, you have part lookup. And at the bottom right, you have your invoice totals and functions like finalize, save, and recall. So let's begin an invoice. If you know the account that you're going to bill to, you can type in that number, press enter, and you'll see that account information populate. If you don't know the account number though, you can click on account list and you can start typing and it will search as you type. And this searches by account number, account name, contact name, and phone number. Once you find the account that you're looking for, you can double click with the mouse or single click and choose account at the bottom right. Then you'll notice that the cursor drops down to the part look at, at the bottom. So let's type in a part number. Line code is not required. You press enter. It will bring up the price that is specified for the account that you have in there. You can press enter to put that on the invoice. Let's look up a couple more parts. If you type in a part number where the number is found across multiple line codes, it will pop up and ask you which line code you're looking for. You can use the arrow keys on the keyboard and enter, or you can cl double click with the mouse or click and hit select at the bottom right. Enter, we'll put that on the invoice. And let's look up one more thing. Once your items are on the invoice, if you need to make any adjustments, you can do so like this. If you need to take a part off of the invoice, you can use the red X. That will remove it. If you put a part on the ticket with uh, the wrong quantity or wrong price, you can double click anywhere across the line. It will bring the part back down to the bottom as you uh, initially put it up there at the same quantity and price. And you can just, if you need to change the quantity, you can type that in, hit enter. It'll put it back up on the ticket. If it's ready to go, down at the bottom right, you have your finalize button. But right above that, you have a notes text box. And here you can attach any notes to this invoice. You can uh, type in a, a name, a phone number, anything that you want to here, and it will attach attach those notes, it'll print them on the on the hard copy and also uh, permanently attach it with this invoice and you can search that in your transaction history later. So I will put something in here for the sake of demonstration. Click finalize. It will show a preview of the ticket on the screen first. Now at this point it is it is not finalized so if you need to add something or make any other adjustment to the invoice, you can cancel at the bottom right and go back, make your adjustments and hit finalize again. Otherwise, you can proceed uh, with finalizing the invoice. If it's a charge account, you'll notice that the charge is selected up at the top. If it's a cash ticket though, um, the cash, credit card, and check options will be available for you to select the appropriate option. I'll hit confirm. It will finish that invoice and it will refresh the screen so I can start a new ticket. Let's look at cores and how to do cores and core returns. I'll look up a part. If I want to um, take the core off, the core value, you'll notice that there's a $33 core charge on this part. If I want to uh, take that off, I can use a shortcut here in the quantity field. I can use the quantity, whatever it is, one, two, or so on, and the letter P for part only. Press enter, 
and that will remove the core charge from, from the line item when it goes on the invoice. The core value is still displayed there, but you'll notice that exchange is yes, and that it is not in the extended amount, and the core value down at the bottom right is zero. That's how you do an exchange. Now let me remove this. If you want to bill the part out with the core charge, you just add that to the invoice as normal. Just to enter to put it up there and you'll see that the core value is there. Exchange is no, it is in the extended amount and the core value is down at the bottom right hand corner. Now let's go ahead and bill this out. I'll select cash and confirm. And let's look at how to do a core return. I'll look up this part again. Any return on our system is a negative one or negative whatever the quantity is. So I'll start with a negative one and to refund only the core charge, I can put a C behind that. So negative one C and then enter. And that puts it up on the ticket with the exchange as CO for core only. And you can see that it has refunded the uh, core value. Now let's look at how to do a manual sale. Sometimes you may have to do a sale on a part number that's not in your database, a non-database number. There's a shortcut key on the keyboard for this. It's F12. So if you press F12, it will pop up with the manual sale window. And you can put the details of the sale in the description box here. Anything that you want to, to describe the part there, you can put in there. It can be a line code, a part number, uh, you know, any kind of description. So let me put something in there. You can specify a sale price. It will automatically figure a cost in a list for you, but you can override those if necessary. Enter will bring it back into point of sale. And then one more enter will put it up on the invoice. That's all for this pro tip video. Be sure to check out our other videos, including part two of point of sale basics. You can subscribe on YouTube, follow us on Facebook and Twitter for more information.